What up, everybody? Expiration Friday, September 15th. Want the Apex. Let's go. Morning, morning. What a crazy, uneventful month. Vixen straight decay, markets hanging tight. Nice and consolidated. We, we called this. We said this market was going to be flat to up for the month. No sell off, no crash. Still bullish ish. Let's see if next month turns out to be. It's going to be really interesting to see what next month or two turns out to be. We're going to see Monday morning what the new data looks like. Hmm. Welcome to Rocket Scooter. Let's go. Typically, monthly expiration, unless the Wednesday and Thursday before it are selling really hard or, or rallying really hard, the Friday tends to be relatively benign relative to the rest of the week. So, I'd be very, again, that's, in, that's anecdotal. Don't, there's no, there's no, um, I'm trying to find a pattern what I just said. Normally, you don't normally see a Friday of expiration be the day that just flips everyone on their head. The Wednesday was pretty stable and the Thursday was pretty stable. Nothing special happening today. Well, it's ex-dividend date for SPY, so you could see a mad rush to get in. The people that want to get the dividend. <laughs> Let's get ready to go. All right, just quickie. Uh, DD bands opening nice and rational inside of all the bands, so looking great. A good, nice, clean trading day today. VIX is well below the August triple B and trading lower. Uh, nice and clean on that. We're getting ready to go. Got my futures, got my spy, got my VIX. Ready to hit. Good morning, team. Friends, family, new faces. Feel free to say hey in chat. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Let us know what you're trading. We'll take a look at it. As always, smash that like button. Give us some love on the stream. We have a great surprise in store. We're not a surprise, but a great thing in store for you guys next week. We're going to start having these like super spaces. We're going to have so many cool speakers on them. Start coming to our Twitter spaces. You're gonna have such a variety of people. A whole bunch of new folks that y'all probably never uh, heard on spaces before. All right, we're kicking it off. Let's go. Oh, wow, Spice almost already over at lower DD band. Let's see where that is. I'm still showing the U contract on my screen, by the way. Right, so this liquidity map's come through. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, I'll have to see what we get there. Somebody keeps commenting on YouTube that the voice goes in and out like in waves. And I listen to my own stream. Now, I just don't understand what they're saying. Does this voice sound weird for anybody? Like they say like it, like the volume goes down and then up and it like oscillates. Is it, or does it sound <coughs> relatively normal? Like, just like a normal voice. All right. Oh, when I turn my head away, the volume trails off. Yeah, that's probably what, what happens. But they, they made it seem like it happens all the time. I'm like, this probably, yeah, because I have a dynamic mic, so I 
you have a really small cone. Oh, below I'm on the hedge pressure today. Mm, fancy. All right, so there you go. 447 and a half short. Possible. Yeah, when I turn my head this way, it drips off. But that's probably in the first 20 or 30 minutes. I'm usually eating my breakfast or drinking something. How am I going to do my shots of tequila in the morning? No one hear me slurping in the mic? Teddy's got to go get drunk. Shot. Carpe diem, let's go. <laughs> I don't know if I want to short, but I, I just normally when I would short. This is the monthly head pressure resistance right out the door to here to DD band. DD band's right on the edge. So honestly, it's kind of like your irrational hitting that DD band going lower. So all signs are, and again, random rule, stuck at two. Let's see, why are you doing this? Hold on. Uh, 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 so basically it would be short from here to DD and it's going to probably be the only thing I could see to do. I don't only take the bet that the market crashes out, but let's look at the appropriate thing. Let's take a look at monthly resilience, right? This is what's going to tell you, uh, what happens to the tiebreaker. As you see, S and P monthly resilience, negative 18, NASDAQ negative 31. So these numbers right here are the tiebreakers of these guys right here. So let's go ahead and look at QQQ real quick. So VIX analyzing very quick. VIX has nothing in the way, so we're going to forget about it for now. There's no pivots coming anywhere close to VIX. My market's still showing closed. Oh yeah. Why is that? My market's still showing closed. That's weird. This is what we're calling bug fix month. So we're going through and, and, and fixing these little tiny things. Yeah, a day like today, the downside is just too too limited. For me to want to take it to chase a short but what i do is on days like this i like to wait to see if we get mhp break to the upside so this is the setup today um with with resilience being what's sort of here okay let me draw with the white mode two resilience is resistance from there this is raz less than zero um brsu is that pressure right there liquidity map Monthly res less than zero is also tiebreaker. So with DD band here, the play is really short lived. So what I do either, instead of taking the short from here to here, what uh, what I normally do, because again, again, you're like right on the edge. You probably have about maybe 10 or 15 points <coughs> on the Z contract. Uh, if if monthly res goes above zero, I would take the long from here to here. Like I like to wait and then and I would close everything out. So you know monthly hedge breaks can be very violent. So that could give you a nice violent upside. So waiting on this one until if I get a 447 half break, I take it. QQQ and just mean reversion somewhat. I'm sorry, illiquidity pocket. I'm sorry. I'm stuck in the middle. Illiquidity pockets hate the middle, right? We really need to update this to show illiquidity pocket instead of. It's technically correct, but we need to show what the illiquidity bucket does. Hate the middle. We're gonna rush from one side to the other. So, um, this is my expectation. I'm just gonna draw this one today. It's gonna be a slightly down day today, y'all. I 
healthy res is the tiebreaker. So the yellow line is the tiebreaker at the yellow line. Negative, negative. Um, the white line, resilience, is also negative. This is mode two resilience. Has less than zero to DD. So my call of the day again is from about here to there. Give or take. If monthly rest flips greater than zero, uh, we'll take the break off of there. So everybody see how easy that is? Run out the door. I love Rocket Scooter or what? Tell me you love Rocket Scooter by clicking the like button on the stream. Don't just not click that like button. So let me talk about monthly maps. Great question. This is expiration day. Put very little faith in the what you see. A monthly map is going to change drastically on Monday. Monthly expiration on that day is an iron wall. Everything is just staring at today's event only. You'll see Monday will be drastically different. What up, Ashton? Gracing us with your amazing presence. <laughs> yeah, my platform's still showing market close. What up with that? I figured this out. And my my features channel is looking kind of funky. Hold on. Let me try something different here. Maybe I'm frozen up. Let's try something else. Let's click this. Let's click this right here. And we'll refresh and see if this thing turns on. There we go. That might be better. This is kind of a little bitty bug, little bitty buggies here and there, fixing them all one at a time. This is what we're calling optimization mods. So we're going through and we are cleaning up, like essentially when we're building the platform, I'll give you guys. So here's what I want you to do. Everybody do me a favor. I built the trading platform. As you know, <laughs> we, we have this brand new technology where anybody out there with a tool, with an indicator, with an algorithm that sells it or wants to sell it. You give me a me you send me a message. We have this brand new technology that nobody does. We have ability for you to take your indicator, like all of mine, as you see, and host your indicator on a server, does the calculations, and it creates socket connections to broadcast your indicator. I'll put it to the front end. What that basically means is, unlike trading view in other places, you have to go in there and install indicators in your platform you have to give out the source code there's no way anybody's going to subscribe and continue to pay you money every month for your tool if you give them the source code you literally give it to them they're going to pay for one month and steal it and run away use it for free forever that kind of sucks well we have the ability to fix all of that you can program your stuff in this console environment on our servers and or on your on your end and it uploads to our servers and your indicators like hedge pressures, monthly hedge pressures, broadcast to the platform. See how this works? Resilience, all this is coming from a server. You will never be able to see how these indicators work. Completely secure marketplace who created this. It's a new business focus. Now what we're doing is before we launch all of that, we're doing this massive cleanup. So as we were building our tools, as you see into the platform, um, all these features that you see here and all the bugs we're fixing is because this technology is brand new. Nobody's done anything like this, right? And it's a huge technical hurdle to be able to do all this, all the socket connections and stuff, but it is a massive, massive win for the trading industry. So what we what we did is we told everybody, okay, well, you get, what do you guys want to do? You don't want to get all the features in really quick. Up to this point, we're calling like the freeze point of phase one, right? You know what the features? 
or do y'all want us to like build out and make it work? Everybody's like, we want features. And we go, okay, well, we're gonna release the features as fast as possible. As fast as possible. And by doing that, things will be like, you know, a lot of things are connected and talking to each other. It's gonna be a little buggy. Everybody wanted us to automate everything as fast as possible. And they said, we'll go from here. Don't worry. Um, he said, okay. So now that we got to the stopping point, we're just going through and, and kind of polishing things up. A lot of things were definitely rough. And we told, we told everybody and they go, that's okay. It's a little rough. We're cool with it. We just want the numbers on the screen. And so, so the plus side is we're done with everything. Now the one downside is as we chose the fast track project style, we had to go back and clean it up. Little tiny bugs here and there, nothing like breaking. Um, so what we want everybody to do, if you have an experience that is unfavorable, like for instance, you have now granted, I'm not showing the Z contract. This is one of the little bugs that we're wearing today is not really bugs. So it's a design change. We're going to make it to where you can choose which contract month you're displaying. So like this is U23. If I type Z23, right? It's not showing the Z23 DD band. That's one of the things that they're working on right now. So the DD bands are only locked into an automatically chosen, uh, the current front month is being traded. So we need to have it to where it adjusts based on the contract. Anyways, um, if you have an experience, what I want you to do is take a full screen screenshot. And I mean full screen, I mean like this. Whatever you see on your screen, watch my screen. Look at that, top to bottom, the whole thing. And I want you to drop in the tech support channel on our Discord and say, hey, my candles freeze in futures when I make an order or liquidity map doesn't refresh when I switch tickers or something like that, right? Little things, little things that we wouldn't notice in testing. So like we have a whole testing process and test test server. We always install something on the test server. Our, our team and bug testing team te test it, check it, try to break it. It looks good, we release it. But then you got like, you know, we almost have 5,000 user accounts. So what ends up happening is one of you guys discover something, but the, the rule of numbers that we didn't, we couldn't have seen like a scaling thing or something like, uh, because we're not, we're not trying like a million things when we're testing. So what can happen is um, because everyone's using it, y'all discover things um, that we couldn't have forecast and like, oh, you know what? We didn't think of that. And then we fix it. <laughs> so now we're going through this bug fixing phase. So when I'm ready to do, if you have an experience that's unfavorable, take that full screen screenshot. Allow me to demonstrate again, because as, as weird as it is to follow directions and you're trying to be a day trader or whatever, your job is to be very strict with your own rules and listen carefully and follow directions, even ones that you give yourself. And people still, 10% of people still don't get this. Take a full screen screenshot, watch this. It means top to bottom, the whole thing. I wanna see these words, these words, these words. If you open your, your socket connection, that makes it even easier. Um, let me make an instruction kit. And you do this and immediately we can kind of see what you see. We also have the ability to access your platform from your point of view and our admin side. So our admins can log in to your experience, like all your settings that you have. We can see the platform as you see it as well. So a lot of times we can troubleshoot what you're doing. Like a lot of times you might be, oh, where's the liquidity map? It's not showing up and we, we can log in and be like, oh, well you remove the indicator. So that's a cool thing that we can do as well to help troubleshoot. But if you don't put that full screen screenshot with your connections and your status, we're gonna have to come back and ask you to do that before we can help you. And that makes it like slower. So, this is gonna be the, the rule. I want everybody do this. Just drop it into tech support and just describe your problem as much as you can. Not a lot of problems going on still right now. It's just little nuances, right? And we're fix, we're uh, we're doing this month is called optimization month. So now what we're doing is we're optimizing the platform for memory usage. We're optimizing the storage, the split between server calcs and and, and front end calcs, and just making it squeaky clean and smooth before we go into next phase, which is that big old marketplace I talked about. This thing is gonna be like a well polished grease machine. Who fucking nailed the trade plan set up today? Monthly hedge pressure down D band. Well, boom, here it is. S and P coming up right on that bottom break. Let me go up here. Hi, look at that. Uh, rockets here from the wind. Everybody, there's some rockets in chat. Let's go. I love it. You guys are killing it. Killing it. I'm gonna start my trading challenge again on uh, probably Monday or Tuesday. 
think we're ready to go with that. So that's it. There's a scout today. That was very predictable. Polygon. Okay. Uh, log out and log back in. That's another thing that I think is what's probably happening. Uh, this is a this is the thing that when we release a new patch, if you're still in your same session from yesterday. You gotta close down and reopen it. the example <clears throat> and just detail like anything that you experience and what we're doing is we're making little projects out of them so little by little we're going through and um, as we this year let's talk about our milestones this year what what have we accomplished as a team this year right in one year rock scooter soft open in uh in may with just charts and automated um liquidity map we don't have really much anything else we fully launched in september August, September, somewhere in there. And in one year's time, we've done, we've automated all of our processes. We've created automated alerts for all of our processes. We've created cheat sheets for you to learn all of the things that we teach here. We've created a scanner that allows you to scan for the, the selection you want, all kind of, all kind of things. You can do a scanner and scan for stocks. We've created the resilience indicator, the resilient sub charts and small charts. We've combined everything from the old app into the new app which is the walls widget and other things we created mini charts that you can pop out and resize and save your layout on a screen at different places. Um, we've created all of these different, um, user interface type things. And you can see things on the top border, see things in the right widget pane. Um, <coughs> we've created an automated discord bot that manages your manages your roles and they have other features coming out soon. We've created a, a connection to a futures broker to allow you to trade futures and get futures data. We created a generic watch list and add your favorite tickers to it. We've added the risk intervals and, and wrote a, a web scraper and parser to pull data from the CME site and create and calculate all these things and put your yellow lines in here. In one year. We've done all of that in a year. In a year and a half, I want everybody, I want some round of applause in chat. In a year and a half, we've gone from this experience. on the side of here with another platform to this. What's up? That's in a year and a half. Oh, and we've had major graphic uh, graphical overhaul to update and, and refresh the platform, make it look pretty. That's a year and a half worth of work. That's amazing. This is one hell of a, a team that we, we have here. A lot. And then so, as you know, we've crammed everything in like that. And it's great. And so now we're going to go through and all these things have to kind of tie together. And it is a monster feat to do that with the technology we have, which puts the indicators on the server side and broadcast them forward. So a lot of the experiences you have are us pioneering that technology. Nobody's done something like that. So we're having to create all kinds of very interesting solutions to be able to do this and scale, by the way, because when this marketplace opens in a couple months, imagine any awesome vendor out there. Like we're gonna, we're working with with um with our buddy Karma Option. You might have seen the teasers about that. But Karma uh, has an algorithm, and right, so we're gonna integrate part. And this is a little teaser. We're gonna integrate like he'll, he'll his tools will be available for you to add to Rocket Scooter as well with the same technology. So you'll be able to have indicators that you buy from the marketplace that'll show up here as well that'll also be protected indicators just like hedge pressure right 
So in the future, as we more and more of our friends with technologies out there have things, we're going to have them have the ability for them to put their stuff in Rocket Scooter or us make custom applications for them um, with our technology. So a lot of a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, dude. Karma's a boss. He's a good he's a good friend. I've known that dude for a while. He lives in my town. So we're not we'll we'll make a, a, a real announcement when it's kicked off. Uh, there's two things we're gonna do. Karma will have a again, this is just a teaser. So don't go don't go leak this out. Karma will have his own application for his algo. I'm building it for him. Additionally, you'll be able to buy his indicators for Rocket Scooter. Choose one or the other. <laughs> keep that, keep that mom. Although that is, that's really, that's, it's, it's kind of announced, but that's, that's really, we're just, we've been dropping teasers to make it fun. So anyone out there, we can build a custom app for you with the same type of technology. Reach out. Or we can just throw your tools inside of our platform, or, or we can do both. Rocket Scooter IPO anytime soon? I don't know. Should we go public? I want to buy shares in the company. <coughs> and get some Siri, what? Some Series C funding for going public? Yeah, I'm probably going private. First time you, since using Rocket Scooter, Simon, you've seen Spy Below Monthly Hedge Pressure. You see how when I say that, you know, I put out a reel that says I only short against monthly hedge pressure from the bottom. I mean, sorry, there's only times when I short, and that was from that video when I said I only short from monthly hedge pressure from the bottom. You'll see how clean it is. Does every, everyone see this, right? Look, look, at there's a, it tapped it right there with the candle. A little green candle tapped it. Everyone see how clean that is? So you have you have the liquidity map, which is here to here, right? That's that's one B. And then resistance below open to here to DD band. This is fucking textbook, right? You can't you can't beat that. That's why I'm saying I don't I don't I don't try to short highs. Days will line up where it's so obvious to short. <coughs> Recurrent. So you guys said amazing Matt and team, awesome, amazing platform. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So it's, we've done a lot in a year and you guys have been here for the entire year. Y'all have seen us make a lot. Oh, and I didn't even think about it. Automated DD band. I'm sorry, automated uh, liquidity maps. I kind of left things off the list of what we built. This automatically displays the liquidity map and it displays the drawings for you. Um, God. So imagine what next year is going to be when we have AI assist and, and AI features in the platform. Rule assist. Um, automated back test, drawing probabilities. Here's, here, here's another thing. You guys ready for the dream? Watch this. It'll use machine learning to try to find rules and conditions that are similar to this and create new rules that we don't know. And it's also going to have a really statistical back test that's going to say, uh, here's trade 1B and it'll have like this 83%. Trade 1A, 62%. And what are these percents? Well, what it's going to be is the percents are going to be based on a set of conditions that you can program or download from us. We make them like essentially a rule set or a condition set that will say under these conditions in a back test of the last hundred times or the last infinite days, we found a hundred times where this trade setup was here and you open below and these are the conditions. So a hundred times we found the same setup in the past under volatility conditions, no risk interval breaks. These irrational rules are, are set and clean and rational. And these are the probabilities that this trade took off when resilience was negative. That's the next step. So when we say like AI assist is going to be things like this, it's going to actually draw probabilities next to these arrows based on similar conditions in the market. No catalyst, no rational break, rules to go irrational, um, this liquidity map under these fixed conditions, and the stats right on screen. So it's taking a back test and finding similar conditions and saying under, under, under conditions with no catalyst, this is the probability that this leg actually took off and it'll print it right on the chart for you. That's coming out this year. And if you were to say, okay, another thing we want to do is be able to like click a little button, right? That like, 
is an overlay and I say, well, let me see the last time this setup happened under the same conditions. Click that button, jumps back in time, loads that liquidity map up and shows you this is what happened. Click back in time. Okay, that's what happened. What about times it didn't work? Let me let me check a box that says worked, didn't work. How about the ones that didn't work? Okay, go back in time. Oh, here's one that broke. This is what I can do. All of a sudden you have a yes and no. This is when it works. This is how it doesn't work in this high behave in both cases. When you make your trade plans, that's what I'm saying. That's year two, Rock Scooter. Imagine seeing the, the case that didn't work and the case that did work, and all of a sudden you're drawing on your chart, your trade plan. And all that is is taking a back test, but showing on the chart the conditions of the back test, which doesn't have to be complicated. You can go out there and with a regular back test and program all these things. Um, like complicated program of all these conditions. Well, the AI is going to look at it for you. Conditions, what are they? Well, here's a condition, right? VIX is below triple B. What are, what are the conditions? And you want to know what they are? These are our rules. And we're going to tell you, you know, if you go to the reference guide and the overview, these are the conditions. It's going to look for all these conditions to line up and give it like a lineup score. Do we have a volatility runaway? No. Is there an index catalyst? No. Are we outside the doomsday band? No. And so when all the conditions line up, it's going to create a condition score. And it's going to look for matching condition score that, that line up to a degree with a little bit of variety, like a, like a little bit of variability, and find similar conditions and present probabilities based on those conditions. So saying that the market's just ebbing and flowing, this is the probability that trade took off in the past. It's basically doing things all of you do every day, except it takes all of that manual labor off of you to go out there and write a journal and remember the last BRSU and remember all the dates and, and writing a bunch of spreadsheets and keeping a bunch of logs. It's AI assisted journaling and backtesting and it's all, I've already designed it. <laughs> and it's right, it's, it's gonna be awesome. So year two is gonna be that. Phase one is to get all our stuff automated with futures. Phase two is the AI stuff, the journaling stuff, the probabilities on the screen, things like that. The rule assist, which which if I try to trade against my own rules, it warrants me that I'm breaking a rule. Um, we're gonna have connections to different brokers. <laughs> and we're gonna try to get a rhythmic connection here so you can trade your trader finding programs inside a rocket scooter on year two, which means we're gonna have to create an interface that's compatible with rhythmic, and that's year two and the marketplace where you can buy and sell. You can sell your tools, you can buy other people's tools all located inside a rocket scooter. So by the end of year two, all of that stuff plus some more should be here. I can tell you we're doing years three and four and five, but I can't spoil it. If you think year two is great, three, four and five is even more amazing. We're starting to gain interest of some private equity firms taking a look at our stuff. So I've pitched a three and five year milestone plan. I put it together and people go, this is cool. This is very cool. So as we're building this, so days over on the short side, everybody knows we ran right to DD band and tap. Look at that. Look how clean that was on S and P done. Short is over done for the day. Now it's bouncing up a DD just like that. Loving it. You guys are awesome. Thanks for joining us for the journey. So like I said earlier, um, phase one is complete. Well, almost complete. We need to automate a couple more things like uh, VIX risk interval rule in here and then uh, automated uh, red lines, yellow lines on the chart. That's the next indicator. And then phase one is technically over, over. But it, those are going to come after we do the optimization. Optimization is making sure all these processes and connections we build in the platform run smooth and are nice on every browser, on every environment, Mac OS, mobile, you name it, Windows, whatever environment you're in. Multiple browsers, uh, you guys are all trading and looking at different things, different tickers, any experience you have that's unfavorable. I don't care how big or how, how small. Full screen screenshot. Click this button here to open your status so we can make sure your thing is connected and post up your experience. It doesn't matter what it is. Because now, as we've had, our team has expanded, right? Massively. A bunch of people working on a bunch of pieces of this. All we need to do is make sure that 
when we tied everything together, it's all tying together great. And the more people that are trying different different combinations of things that we don't all try, we'll discover little bugs that we didn't notice before. So the more people doing this, the more helpful it is. So when you go in tech support, go in there with a positive attitude, like, hey, this is my experience. Our job now is to pull you guys as our test group. Hey, what's your experience? Tell us. And when you tell us, we will take your experience and we're going to make a line of projects to go through and investigate one of these things. As I noticed for a little bit, switching tickers from futures to stocks to back to futures is two separate data feeds. And all of a sudden, when I switch back to stocks, it would ask for like hundreds of thousands of candles. And that would freeze it up for a little bit until that data came through and then it would unlock. That's not a usual thing. That's a, that we discovered that through my experience. So I detailed, I took a picture. I said, you know, on the watch list, when I, when I click a, a stock ticker, see, look, I just clicked a stock ticker, liquidity map, takes 10 seconds to load up. <clears throat> I'd like it to load up instantly. I would put in a thing that says, I'd like liquidity map to load up instantly. We would go in there and investigate that. And I, you know, that's the idea is that we want to speed it up. What is your wish list and what do you think you would like to see as well? So I click from futures back to stocks, it would lock up for a little bit. And we found out that there was just a little teeny weeny bug. And so as I noticed, this takes about five seconds to load up the indicator. Can I get that to go faster? Like these are these are little these are the things that when I say we're bug fixing or bug testing, that's what we're gonna do. As I notice right now, my futures candles are freezing up as I'm switching from one to the other. The little tiny things like that. And then I would take a full screen screenshot and boom, there you go. Found the spreadsheets on your side and you drop ship cough drops and human part. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. You use that in your trading. Like, did you know Thursday's been the biggest mover in the last four weeks? That is stats. Statistics are going to be everything. Like trading is, is like playing poker. You have, but the difference is, hold on. I'm gonna give you an example. Hey, I noticed that my futures candles are freezing the last 10 minutes, even when I switch tickers and back. Notice on the right side of the chart, uh, there are no updates. <coughs> Showed, <coughs> I'm connected to the sockets. This is how you would type it, Lane. Connected and connected. And then I could say, Clicking F, and if I refresh, clicking F5, clicking F5 refresh does not update candles. See how that works? And then he can, he can go in there and say, oh, okay, let me look at that, and then we'll figure out what's going on. So, yeah, yeah, so that's exactly how you would do it. And then I, what I did was I refreshed, switched tickers and switched back. So basically I'm giving you an example of how you do it. Watch, and then I'd say, okay, and now, oops, let me open this. Let's see, and now, after refresh, switched to NQ, then back to EP, and now data
there are candles missing. And, can see. and that's it. No, I'm not. I'm not trading. I've taken like a like a three week break on trading. I haven't. It's just been nice to just get up and talk for a little bit. But I've mostly been working on the platform. So I haven't really been doing much trading, trading. Not since the market topped out. Y'all haven't seen me make a trade in maybe almost a month now. To me, it, to me, it's very, it's very difficult to trade, stream, deal with bug testing and releases and all that stuff. It's been a, we built a brand new, here's another thing. We built a, a huge program inside of Rocket Scooter, um, an affiliate. Do you have a new employee and affiliate director? Uh, you may hear Adam a lot more now. He's working for us now. Um, this last month has been like nothing but meetings. We've been doing so many things uh, on the side. I just haven't, I haven't, like for me, when it comes to trading, it's like I got to be in the zone and be able to focus and be. Okay, I'm done. Okay, he's going to log in as me and you're going to see a little pop up here in a second. So he's, he's, so this is an example of what can happen. Look, I reported my problem. Tell him what I see. A little gap in features and data's acting, behaving strange. So he's about to log in as me. He's going to look into it. This is a great feature. He can download my browser um, in the console, the code of what's happening here just to kind of troubleshoot. <laughs> So I think starting like next week, things are going to slow down a little bit and I'll be able to like focus. Like when I trade, I want to be in the zone. I want to wake up, focus on a trade. Minute, instead of wake up, got six meetings in the morning and 20 DMs. And, and it's just like, it's becoming harder and harder for me to do that, do this, do that, do this. So if I'm in a trade, I'm focusing on a trade and then I'm ignoring you guys. Like in, in Discord and stuff becomes way too much to balance. So I'm excited to get back to just kind of chilling and trading. Be nice. So if you're out there and you want to be, you, you have a community or you have a group of people you work with or you have tools you want to sell, send me a message. I'm serious. Um, look, see right here? So as you see on my screen, we have the ability for my developer to log in as me so he can see what I see and try to recreate the problem and troubleshoot on the back end. Great feature that we made to make troubleshooting even better. And they, that's what happens. So he just closed out. I can only have one connection open at a time. So now he's logged in as me and he's looking at like, why is this happening? So I'm, I'm glad some of you guys can experience the whole bug testing process. And it's as quick as that. He's going in, he's going to make a patch and then we're going to look at it. Easy peasy. All right. What a great day. Uh, from from here to DD band, this will close the day out for good, right? And it's random once you drop below DD band again. It's trying to get there. Uh, it's obviously DD float failure as well, so you know don't trust anything once you fail on the float. So we appreciate you having you here. We love all you guys. Y'all are great. And thanks for supporting the group and supporting the building of this. I hope y'all enjoy the process. Um, obviously the tools that we have, the company we have, the way we handle things. I've never run a tech company before, much less a software company. I hope as CEO, I'm, I'm, I'm also giving you guys an experience that you like. Everything from here was new to me. I mean, I know how to code, make stuff, but running a tech company with 25 employees, I wasn't, I wasn't born into software. This is a whole different ball game for me. So the way we execute projects, the way we plan things out, the way we integrate um, your experiences and the tech support experience together and create community service, community management, affiliate management, all the things we have to run this company. Hopefully y'all are having a pleasant experience. I'm not a tech guy. So the way that everything's run, the way we listen to feedback, the way we optimize and grow and learn from our mistakes, are, are y'all happy with that? Are we doing a feedback for, for me, the, the newbie CBA, CBA, 
the newbie CEO who didn't know a damn thing about how to how to work a tech company. That's for sure. I'm a chemical engineer. My experience in, in projects and and flow and troubleshooting and root cause analysis and all that comes from the, the world of chemical plants and refineries. I had to learn how software works. Not just let's make a piece of software and let's go. <coughs> all the back end steps that it takes for software project to be managed, um, for repos to be managed, for development work to take place, um, bug tests, all the different pieces that you would do in a software company. Like I had to learn that the hard way. Also in this first year, oh, he's still logging to me. It's also this first year, not only did we build all this stuff for you the first year, this first year I learned how to not be a dog shit CEO. Right out the door, it was like messy. It was disorganized. Imagine, imagine a chemical engineer in the first year, you know, nothing about software, trying to figure out how to make an efficient software company that can pump stuff out very quick with minimal bugs. I had to go through a lot of training. I had people had to train me on everything. Some friends of mine that were in, worked in the industry came on as consultants. One of, one of my buddies came on. He was looking at it. He's like, oh my God, Matt, this is a fucking nightmare. I was like, I know, help me out. And he goes, okay, these are the things you need. This is basic stuff in software industry. You need this and this and this and this. And I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds logical. I, I didn't, that's, that sounds good. He's like, yeah, stop putting everything in Google Sheets. Stop trying to manually do this. Here's your chain of command. Here's how things work. I mean, literally you had to train me how to work in software. So hopefully in the first year, you guys seen improvements with me as a, as a person. My stress levels are down and things look, look a little more smooth and awkward. So. So. so even the, the administrative, the management side, the, the, being the CEO of a corporation in this industry that I knew nothing about, I had to get, I had to get a hit the ground reality dose of training. But the good, best thing about this is that as is, is a trader, you have to have the same mentality. Come into this knowing that you're not great and admit to yourself, I'm not good. I, I sat down with a panel of people and I literally said, guys, I pulled you all together because... I'm terrible at this and I need your help. Each one of you is amazing in what you do and you're gonna teach me how to do my job. And then one by one, everyone spelled things out. We built the process. A lot of people came on board. This is last year, um, like last, two two Junes ago after the soft launch. It was messy, we went for a month where we didn't have data. Data was crashing every day for a month and it was just this nightmare. Like I was laying on the floor, staring at the ceiling, crying, like what the fuck is going on? Like, And it was because you had a bunch of chefs in the kitchen. Everybody knew software and everybody came from a different place and everybody had their own way of doing things. And so there was a bunch of like stepping on each other's toes. One person would do something, another person would undo it. It just had no rhyme or reason. And whose fault is that? It's my fault. They came into a structureless environment and we all felt the pains of it. Well, I didn't give them that structure. We, we graduated from this app, which was me and a couple developers, to a massive team of people that so then we, we sat down, I got a bunch of people together and just like, tell me what to do. I suck ass at this. They're like, oh no, you're just an oil and gas, LOL. Y'all don't know anything about managing projects. They laughed at, at the industry camera. They're like, oil and gas, project manager. Like, that's easy peasy. You guys don't, y'all don't know what real projects are like. And LOL, no, here's what it's really like. And I go, okay. So there's a whole lot of stuff that goes on in software that I no clue. And, it, and when you hear it, you're like, oh, that is obvious, yeah. That would be a problem. Like, oh yeah, you know, okay. This stuff, okay. And then it was just like, I'm like taking notes. I'm like, okay, okay. So then we organized the processes and the, the company just went from like night and day difference over the course of like a month. We started organizing things and people come up. Now we hire new people. They come on board, they immediately get to work. There's no ramp up and training. It's like, we would hire a new person and there was disaster. The website would crash. like. Just stuff like that. Now we've hired, we've been hiring six new people in the last two months. And they come on, they're ready to go. Pew, 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 pew. So like those are the growing pains I've had as a as a leader and as a an administrative leader. So it's cool to evolve and allow yourself to be wrong. And that's a trading skill. You come into here and admit to yourself, I don't know anything about this. You sit with the expert and you say, teach me what to do. Don't come in here saying, I got this, like, I can figure it out. Because shit's going to overwhelm you, hit the fan, and you're going to be lost. Come in with that mentality of, you know what, I'm here to learn. And just absorb what you see around you. Don't take it with a grain of salt. Like, absorb everything. And then start to, like, toy with things and play with things. 
and try to find things that make sense to you and just take it a step at a time and be receptive to change. If you come in with an ego, you're going to be laying on the ground, staring at the ceiling, crying, watching your shit fall apart. Don't be like that. This is a life skill. So in general, you want to be in human. It's a human skill, not just a work skill, a trading skill. If you approach life with humility, with humble, humble approach and attitude, people will even like you more. If you act like you know everything, nobody likes that person. Everyone loves teaching things. If you act like you're very receptive to learn, you make a lot more friends in general. Like the, the I know it all, I'm the best person. Nobody likes that kind of person. They won't work for you for long. They won't be your friend for long. They won't invite you out to the bar because you don't shut the fuck up about what you think you know. Like if you don't sound like you're ready to conversate or learn from others, you're gonna dead end your life. And in futures trading, stock trading, doesn't matter what you do, you're gonna come into something. Be ready to learn and be and be like, you know what, guys, I'm sitting with all of you. Everyone on this team, y'all are all a variety of experience. You're in a Discord with a bunch of people. You know what, I'm here. Hasn't been working for me for years. I'm here to learn something new. Teach me what I don't know. How am I messing this up? And if you take that approach, you're going to be a lot happier in life in general. I promise. That is a promise. I can't promise you'll be a better trader. And it takes years, if ever, for people to get better at that. But I can promise you'll be a happier human being. If you don't feel like, if you're not growing, you're dying. That's the rule of gardening. And also, there's another rule of, of gardening, which I, I can kind of apply to trading. If, if it's not green, it's dead. Right. I garden, by the way. You guys might not know what Matt's real life is like. I'm kind of a hippie yogi. I like I like the garden. I like the surf. I'm like a surfer bro. So I'm all about nature. I'm all about being one with the waves. Hang loose, bro. Listen to heavy metal music while I garden. This is my life. I've had a kick-ass garden. I listen to melodic death metal while I'm fucking, you know, pruning my plants. I know I'm very different and weird, but I like to be like a place where it's just, you become one and connect with something like in anything, gardening, surfing, you're like, it, like surfing is like at one with the water, right? It's kind of like you just hone in on this one thing and you just focus on this one thing and you're absorbed by this one thing. It's a great way to be uh, opposing what I do for work, which is be involved in a thousand things at once. It's just like chaotic ADHD. It's like, whew, I can just focus on one thing and just chillax, right? Find one thing in your life that you can, you can attribute yourself to remove the stress of being absorbed by trading, which is the, a million things thrown at you at once. Find your one hobby that you have as like, as a um, respite, like a relax, a, a retreat. Everybody should have something they do. It doesn't matter what it is. It's like a one thing that you're good at. So if you're not, if it's not green, it's not growing. Let me get back to that. Uh, green has a kind of like a separate meaning than just the color green. Green also means new. If you're not green at something, you're not growing. If you don't, uh, if you don't approach, uh, like for instance, I'm here. This is step one. I'm new. I'm green. If I go to step two and I think I know everything and I'm no longer green, then I'm no longer growing. Every time you learn something, it shouldn't be like, okay, I'm done learning. It should be, what else can I learn? Step three. I get to step three. Okay, what else can I learn? Step four. Every time you advance, still be green. Like, if you're not green, you're not growing, right? So don't ever be finished being new to something. Get better at something, and then now you're new at that thing. How do I improve on that? Like. Treat yourself like you always have somewhere to go, and then you'll always go somewhere. You're trading so you can save up for a ranch. Rowan, dude, that's awesome, man. See, that's the life, just to have like land and just chill. Oh, yeah. All right, so everybody know this is a perfect trading setup day. This is easy to see. This was textbook, if there ever was anything. Uh, the trading day would essentially be over now because you're, you know, we've tapped DD bands and now markets are irrational. We got the rules on those. I like it.
Louis has been here for a while. You've definitely seen improvement over the year. <coughs> Thank you for the feedback. As if, as far as like me as a as a leader, I used to kind of be a dick too. Like I was so stressed out, I was like yelling, screaming at everybody. Blah, blah, blah. Then I learned, I learned to like. management relationships how to be a better person when you're around other people things like that i did a lot of soul searching this last year this company helped me grow as a person i think i'm a better person doing all this work it's all trading skills and trading skills is a mental thing you want to become a better person upstairs with better thoughts better confidence um, that all reflects in trading. And same thing, same thing as poker. You have to know your framework of the odds of everything you're playing with, but you have to have like good, strong mental composure to really survive in this game. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. And so what you're simultaneously learning is like, oh, he's still logged in as me, so let me stop trying to refresh this. He's troubleshooting my experience right now. Awesome. <coughs> um... Yeah, it's like, how do you keep your mental composure under stress while you do a, a very highly complex technical job with lots of variables that can kill you if you're wrong? It's like being an astronaut, repairing something on a space station in the middle of a spacewalk. The only other things can go wrong and you're dead. You're under a lot of pressure to do a very complex job. Not everybody can do it. And the people that do it, it seems like they effortlessly do it, but it's because it's like decades of combat hardening. They get used to doing it. And so they don't go in there with their hands shaking in the middle of a firefight, right? So the more you work at this and the more you continuously learn to get better, the more confidence you'll have working under fire. And, and training is just a thing where you just grind it out until you emotionally get better. That's the, the struggle everyone has, like the big loss you have or the big blow up you have. Most always has to do with not being wrong in the trade uh, or, or picking bad trades. It has to do with the way you handled the bad trade. You don't know how to lose correctly. Intern gymnastics, the first thing they teach children who are going down that path is how to fall without breaking your neck. They teach you to tuck and roll the right way. And, and in trading, a lot of you don't learn that. How do I lose? You have to, you have to accept that losing is inevitable. How do I lose without breaking my neck when I fall? And how do I get back up and keep going? And like the risk management side of Rocket Skier is like the whole, the whole point of why we started, you know, our journey down creating new tools was all for risk management. And so. As you have stronger risk management tools, your confidence, your composure will strengthen over time as you just behave consistently with a rule set. That's really easy to do if you just follow rules. Now having the what rule set you have is a nonstop shopping process. You're always gonna be shopping out there for things that work for you, looking around for things people made or even making your own stuff. Um, over time, you're gonna find stuff that works really well for you. And then it just comes down to like behaving inside of those environment boundaries that you, you built. So my environment boundaries are these rules, right? How do I behave when these rules are red and yellow? Well, it's pretty scripted now. I have specific ways I trade, position size changes and things like that. So now once I can do the same thing every day, it's easy for me to like to self guide and self correct and improve myself because now I'm really doing is just shifting my confidence and betting to my confidence level and, and getting out of bets that I know that are wrong and kind of tailoring my approach to feeling out the market promotional composure that's the last part of the journey and over years you just slowly grow that part of you as you get to experience the randomness of the market and there's always something new happening always something random and weird happening and the last thing is knowing the difference between what is predictable like this like today to a degree Versus what is random. This MHP short back to open right there. This break to open down to DD band right to there. This literally is textbook. It's literally drawn on your screen, right? There will be days when it lines up perfect. There'll be days when it doesn't. There'll be days when it's messy before it happens. How do you act as a trader in all those environments? <laughs> or how you just let the odds be in your favor and how do you bet when your confidence is high and how do you not bet when your confidence is low clearly as people say you've been here long enough and this is a great example 
you're here today is a very special day for you. you we've seen S&P above monthly hedge pressure almost every day. With the exception of the Fitch downgrade, there were like two or three days where we floated below it, I think. For about a year, we've been bullish and we've been above monthly hedge pressure. And DD's been um, relatively fire. I mean, it's been bullish the whole way, right? So now you wake up today and you're below monthly hedge pressure. Immediately, your brain starts seeing this and you go, oh, okay. And that you see how, like when I say I only short off a monthly hedge pressure against it from the bottom, see how clean it can be? It's very clean. You're gonna wake up one day and it's there. And then that's the clean one. And I don't try to like short. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Why am I on that? My screen's open. Okay. Thank you. Like an example is a day like this where you hit monthly hedge pressure on SPY. I mean, that's that little hook right there. Open, yellow, open, open, yellow, open. Here's the open. You resist the open and drop. You drop to support, which is DD band, which is about right here. As you see, there's your DD band. I mean, you went right to it and bounced off and played around with the float failure as well. That's your DD band is exactly here. Textbook. So like I made that video, this is when I short and we posted that in the, <laughs> the Zoom call channel. I don't try to fade everything that goes up. I only short when it's easy to short and it, shorts become very easy against monthly hedge pressure from the bottom, very easy. Monthly hedge resilience is less than zero. I mean, it's textbook, right? This guy right here, bounce right here, monthly res is zero, it's rejection. That's strength on top of liquidity map. This is a probabilistic move and then monthly res less than zero, the yellow monthly res. So we use this monthly res and we'll, we'll do a zoom call. And I didn't do one yesterday and I apologize, but we'll do it today about monthly res. This is a great example. You never really use this yellow line until the last couple of days of expiration or periods when S&P is on monthly hedge pressure, which typically if you're a bear market, you're going to be well below it. If you're bull market, you'll be well above it for the course of the month. As you approach the closing of the month, as we always say, monthly hedge pressure connects with price and gets very close to it. And then this becomes your trading at the end of the month. Monthly hedge pressure resilience is now very useful and it's very clean. Minus 29, minus 70 on NASDAQ, and you hit that monthly and pulled back. Does everyone see that? That is so clean today. And in shorting markets, <coughs> when you're trying to short, there are, does everybody remember like the golden BLU setups where everything's long, you're, you're trading a BLU, it bounces off a hedge pressure, all the lights are green, everything points up, and you take the long and it's like super clean? Well, imagine the opposite in the short side is that when you're below monthly hedge pressure, you bounce off a hedge and everything's pointing down. If you just wait for days to line up and you have super confidence and you trade once a month with a setup like this, and you don't trade anything else, you probably do better than trying to trade every day. You get to find like consistent things that are they're obvious. So like, I'm not trying to short every pop in the market because I just want to fade. It's a silly mentality. Shorting off a monthly hedge pressure is so strong when you open below it in the middle of a bull market. It's it's super clean. You see how today was like ultimately clean. It was a razor sharp pivot. We're in the below triple B environment in VIX. You're gonna be razor sharp pivots. I mean, all these rules that we have. So hit monthly, take a short, close a DD. That would be an ideal trade I would have taken. I, I should have probably managed this one today and actually done it. But you see how this works? At the end of the day, Short setups will appear and seem obvious. Long setups will appear and seem obvious. But most of your days are gonna be spent trying to trying to choose between like three up signals and two down signals, which way do I wanna trade this, right? This is where trading gets hard. Today, everything points down, all things point down. Other days, all things point up. These days are like your gimme days. Bet long, bet short, bet hard, make a decent profit. Those are your like, okay, the market threw me this easy one to see, make some money on that. Most of your time is balancing your confidence on things that are pointing different directions. When I got three ups, but a down, and the down is higher part in the ups, okay, which way do I go? What's my confidence like in the scenarios where things are competing? That's the hard part of trading. And if you focus on the things where more things line up than not, and just maybe make really hard hitting trades on those days to replenish like the nickeling, diming loss that you take from the competing days, easier, less is more. You'll wake up for days where it's just an obvious short or an obvious long, and the probability is higher. 
<coughs> is the same effect if it opens above MHP in a bull zone? Um, if it opens above MHP in a bull zone, let me show you some examples of that. Most all bull zone liquidity maps will open above MHP. Like all of these above MHP. This one above MHP, this one above MHP, both of them. There's one that can open below that we talk about on this one. But bull zone setups above MHP, very likely it bounces yes. So an example is um, this one opening up here is a bull long up. You have to be above MHP for this one to even exist. If it's down here, it'd be a bull short up. So this one is above monthly hedge pressure. And so if it falls, this becomes a BSU, which is over here. And in a BSU, monthly hedge pressure is a bounce. So yes, if it's a BLD, monthly hedge pressure is a bounce as well. The one time that you open below monthly hedge is a BSD. And again, it's impossible to touch yellow in a BSD because it becomes a BLD which again, yellow is resistance. So in any case, whether you are up here and trade down to there, it's support because that is this one. It's the same thing as here. This is a BSU now. This one, if you trade up here, that's resistance. That's a BLD. That is that one. This one is that one. So either, either case, if you open away from it and break and tap it, it's going to hit and go the other way. Um, the easier ones to see are if you open like uh, the actionable ones that are pretty easy, like a BLD hitting monthly hedge, easy long. Those are really strong longs. The RSU hitting monthly hedge, easy short. But every single time you will see if you open below monthly, it's a resistance. You open below monthly, it's a resistance. You open above monthly, it's a support. You open above monthly, it's a support. Monthly hedge is the, is, the, is the stronger of the two hedge pressures. It's got more money tied up into it. So it's a very strong resistance. And breaking monthly hedge pressure is like breaking daily hedge pressure, or sorry, weekly hedge pressure could, could like make the market fall for a day or two. Breaking monthly hedge pressure can sh is, is a sign of changing sentiment that can turn a, a bull year into a bear year. That's transitional to switch entire market direction over periods of months. So once you start trading below monthly hedge pressure, your brain starts saying, oh crap, it could be bearish now. Now this being monthly expiration, we don't think of that now. I'm not saying a hey, market's flipping bearish. We're gonna wake up Monday, it's a whole new month. So we'll have to see then. But if we wake up, typically the rule of thumb is with monthly is excluding the last two or three days of the trading month. If you're trading above monthly hedge pressure and you break through it and the next day you open above it, open below it, so say normally you're trading above it, above it, above it, and then one day there's a catalyst and you trade below it and the next day you are below it again. That next day is a shift from bear structure to bull structure to bear structure. We now call it a bear market. This is bad enough to topple monthly hedge pressure that doesn't expire for like weeks. Now we're opening below it that shift of opening below monthly hedge pressure is bearish for the rest of the month. So today, we are bearish for the rest of the month, which ends today. Does that make sense? Jamie? So anytime you flip below to above monthly hedge pressure, your brain goes, we are bullish for the rest of the month, or bearish for the rest of the month, until it gets back to the other side. So my immediate mindset is pretend that we had two more weeks left on the trading month and SPY is below monthly hedge pressure. I'm immediately a bear now for the rest of the month. Monthly hedge pressure is my is my is one of my main sentiment gauges. DD, monthly hedge pressure, monthly maps. Very helpful. Being below monthly hedge pressure, it's monthly structure, bearish gamma, negative gamma. So now the net sum of all hedging is gonna be very, very, very pressured short for very large positions for the rest of the month, which is today, ends today. It's a great question. But if it, which it should hold, as we know hedge pressures try to hold most of the time on the SPY 11% of the time they break. Um, magically, we never broke through monthly hedge pressure, we just opened below it. That also counts. 
crap, I'm bear we're bearish now for the rest of the month. VIX has a similar mentality. When you fall below this triple B level, up here you go, oh man, shit, we're, we got loose pivots, overshoots for the rest of the month. Okay, razor sharp pivots. No overshoots for the rest of the month. And this month ends next uh, next Tuesday. The third, the Tuesday before the third Wednesday of the month, VIX has a new triple B. So all these little things allow you to have that like mid midterm, medium term sentiment. We have shorting off of monthly hedge pressure, super strong. Especially when the resilience is there. So we have a resilience for monthly hedge pressure. We don't have one for the blue. We can make one for the blue line, but it's a little more complicated because not all stocks in the S&P have options. Uh, weekly options, that is. We thought about making a hedge pressure resilience, which we might actually do. Because we have the big tech stocks, and we can actually easily do that. I wonder if we should just make that on the test server. Let me, let me, let me just ask him to do this. I'm gonna start testing this. Can we make a test? I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna tell him to make make this so I can play with it. Over the, I was like, make it for me real quick so I can get some test data over the month. I really want to see the integrity of of what that would look like, just to see. There you go. How to get resilience on the chart, like you. Ah, okay. Um, you go to indicators and then you add resilience. Just like that. <laughs> Easy peasy. All right, you guys. It's now 940. Market day's over. Nice, clean, easy setup. We're going to call it a day. Um, all right. I'm going to start my trading challenge next week. It'll be fun. Kind of like some downtime while they're optimizing the platform. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Thanks for joining Rock Scooter. We love you guys. Thanks for being here for the journey, the development, as we continue to reshape the, the industry, building things you will never built before and always want to have as traders. I'm happy to be servicing you guys this way. This is our dream is to build a trading platform we've always wanted. And we're going to keep crunching it out. Uh, crushing it out. Whatever. So thank you. Uh, join our Discord. Make sure you check out the extended trial if you want to check out the platform. $35 a month. The full experience for three months. You can go through the education, everything we do. 
um, the $200 a month package that we have. You can have all the information and tools available to you uh, to try the trial. So we want you guys to check out the Sooner trial and uh, learn how to trade like we trade. Learn something new. Be green. We'll see you on tomorrow. Oh, I'll see you on Monday. If you're in the Pro Plus, we'll have a Zoom call in an hour and 20 minutes, right at noon. So be here. We'll talk to you all later.